beaver blade on this DR. See if I can cut down some privet. So the kit comes with a whole bunch of stuff. You get the beaver blade, of course, and then you get uh, various spacers, and then you also get a brake kit. And all this is for different models. And I don't know if I'm stupid <laughs> or uh, or what, but I, I don't, I can't, there's no number on this DR string trimmer that I can Google and figure out, you know, what number it is. I, I've typed them directly into the DR website, all this. But anyways, we're just going to go by pictures. So it says the, uh, the older uh, standard pro and commercial models uh, use this little spacer. This is pre-2001 standard pro. And then uh, more modern models with a picture looks like mine. Uh, you have the uh, Sprint 2000 use this big spacer. And then in this brake kit it says that uh, this kit applies to trimmers with serial number TRM 156200 and above. So, you know, I don't, I really don't know uh, if that's me. I don't think so. Because <laughs> this looks different. This has that, like, aluminum housing on the front. So, I don't think that kit applies to me. So, I'm pretty sure this is what I need. So, we're going to slap this puppy on. I'm going to get all the mud out of here. <laughs> Just to see what size uh, bolt I have. What's that? That feels kind of like a 12. Nope, I was wrong. It's a 13. Let's see. Put on there good. All right. And there's a little hole in here. I think that'll maybe we'll get this to lock in place with that. So I got my screwdriver in the hole, holding that in place. Let's just see. So it says I need to uh, keep the bearing housing plate, the spacer, the uh, mobile support, and the mounting bolt. All right, you see how that bolt fits in there? So I guess that's how you install it is by spinning this. Use a screwdriver to keep the shaft from turning, tightening the beaver blade mobile uh, support in your DR trimmer safety. Uh, don't have any of that. So assembling this the way they say, you have the, the bolt, you have the ball, then you have the beaver blade. Why isn't that sitting all the way down? is going okay okay why doesn't that want to go all the way in maybe it'll suck itself in they need to match the, the proper rotation so this has an arrow saying it goes this way and up here there's also arrow saying it goes that way so that's good then the spacer with a little nipple thing on top and then your dust shield. Okay. Stick that in there. Okay, that's not going to work, I don't think, is it? Okay. Hmm. Okay, so tighten that down with the bell. Okay, okay. Well, I guess that's as good as it gets. I think it's working. All right, look how low this thing goes. Unless you cut in the dirt if you want to. You see that? 
Okay, so another thing that was in here, just so I don't miss it, we got a little file, and it also has instructions on how to uh, maintain this beaver blade. It doesn't have that three inch cutting area that that the brochure says, and I think that's because of the, the model this is. You got this big flange, you know, taking up like half an inch, and then the newer models, you know, they have a much uh, smaller, you know, cover for the for the belt. So you probably would actually get three inches. Saying that, it's kind of amazing, <laughs> you know, fresh sharp blade, how it cuts. Here, let's let's watch it do some work real quick. Yeah, so what do you think about that, man? I mean, it it's a 8.75 horsepower chainsaw, you know, and it just destroys this stuff. And then once you take the height off, you can cut pretty deep into the root balls. You can definitely cut things down far enough you could mow over it, you know. Uh, so I'm going to give it a yep and uh uh-huh. I'm gonna get to work. So what I'm doing is I got we have this little five-sided building that we built and it's surrounded by I think these bigger ones might be uh called a Yopon. I'm not sure. And a lot of privet. Maybe it's just massive privet. I really don't know. But I'm gonna clear this out a little bit and I wanna put yeah, a storage shed over here. But I don't want to go all the way back because we have a walking trail that goes behind our house. And that little clearing over there. And I want to maintain some shield of privacy. seconds for the blade to stop on this model uh, yeah we cut a bunch of stuff it doesn't make it go away though does it you got to do the hard uh, the hard work of getting it out of there but I guess once you get it out there then you can go back for a second pass and try to make it where you can mow over it and keep this stuff from coming back huh yeah yeah that's that's uh it's easier than using a chainsaw on your hands and knees. Sometimes. But the Widowmaker problem, you know, things falling on your head, it really could still be a big threat. Well, I don't know. Things like this wouldn't kill you, but it'd be annoying. I don't like getting poked in the head. I don't know. This thing cuts, cuts like goddamn. <laughs> you know? It's amazing. It cuts. Cuts pretty good. But, um... Still a lot of work clearing out crap like this. You know, the, the reason we went with the beaver blade is because most of our land, which is overgrown, is like really overgrown. A lot more overgrown than the string trimmer can do. The string trimmer can, you know, maintain something that you don't mow every year. But this, uh, this beaver blade, 
it's 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 gonna cut through. You know, I don't know how long it's been since we've been back here. Uh, you know, twenty years or something. So, yeah, that's what it's for. It's 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 nice not to have to bend over and use a chainsaw, and cut down low, and and it cuts real good. There's a lot of you know, I think it says max 7200 RPM, 8.5 horsepower behind it. I mean, wow. It's just, it's pretty great. But it's not going to change your life. It's just going to mildly make it a little more easier, kind of, maybe. 